Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video day 10. We'll take us to the 15th of uh, November and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SA GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe watch around a couple of weeks. So have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for December. Which is going to be very interesting. You'll uh, get to see what the CFS is forecasting for December in a moment. But uh, before I go on that, just to tell you what's uh, coming up uh, later on today. We've got our live stream after 10pm tonight. So, uh, yes, we're live streaming for uh, the first time, uh, in terms of the 18th there anyway, on a Friday night. So uh, we're going to do our first pub run live. Uh, we're live streaming the GFS 18Z as it is updating. Uh, this evening. So what it'll show, I don't know, but it's going to be an interesting uh, live stream that'll be coming up after 10 o'clock tonight. The first video release shows our 7 a.m. forecast. We also release um, the ECM day 42 day forecast and if that was a January Friday as well, been a busy day at Gas Weathers today, culminating with the uploads with this one, and then a live stream, I'll tell you what's tonight. I'll tell you what's coming up over the weekend, which will be an epic weekend of content. Uh, I'll tell you what's coming up over the weekend at the end of the video. Please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that, and I hope you're having a lovely Friday. Right, let's have a look at the uh, CT then. So the central temperature is uh, coming down, actually, day by day. We're standing now at 7.8, which is around half a degree below average. Uh, and that's provisional to yesterday, to the 4th of November. That's going to come down further when it updates tomorrow. It's quite a cold start to uh, November, this. Uh, we have had a cold night last night. Had a cold night last night with widespread frost in the CT zone. So that will go down perhaps into uh, sort of mid to low sevens. That probably will be below as it gets to the time being. I, I think then it will sort of uh, level off. It will uh, sort of steady. And then it will probably start to rise, actually in the course of that next week as things become milder. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So red line is 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off a bit below average at the moment. It's quite calm. I'm generally saying a little bit on the cool side, really, over this weekend. There's going to be a tick-up that takes place uh, briefly tomorrow, but generally it's quite a cool um, you know, quite a cool uh, scene over the weekend. But into next week, we will see the uh, upper air temperature lifting up, along the surface temperature too. Um, we've talked about this in videos uh, over recent days. The second week of November is definitely going to be uh, a milder period. Looking out to the second half of the month, um, beyond uh, the middle of the month, in the second half of the month, there is a lot of scatter. We have got some on summer members that are cooling down, some of them that are keeping things mild. So, uh, yeah, we might start seeing things going a little bit colder later on in the month. That remains to be seen. But certainly the second week of November, after quite a cold first week of November, second week of November is looking milder. Precipitation wise, those of dry weather to come over the next uh, week to 10 days, actually, for London. We'll be more unsettled in the north and west, but high pressure will keep the south and east with quite a bit of dry weather. Perhaps a wetter trend into the second half of November. But of course, that is a long way off and it's in the unreliable time frame of the GFS and its ensembles. Basically, next week looking pretty mild, uh, but also relatively dry. Temperature anomalies on the 5th to the 13th of November are going to be above average for UK and for Ireland, and the precipitation anomaly from the 5th through to the 13th of November. That's going to be drier than average, a little bit wetter for Western Scotland, but most other areas coming out drier than normal. The latest wind from that from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that the westerlies are returning. So you know we've been looking at these charts over the past few days. We've been bringing in northerly winds. That's the reason we've had quite a cold start to November. Those northerlies are now back in westerly. And uh, that's going to start moving milder air back in from off the Atlantic again. Have this off and through this autumn, haven't we? And back comes the uh, milder air from the Atlantic as the high pressure begins to uh, slip south. High pressure going south. And that's allowing these milder winds to push back in from the west and from the southwest. Right, so uh, let's go through the chart data. This is how the UK Met Euro is looking for midnight on Monday, which is high pressure building in across the country. That will be within relatively cold air, actually, towards the end of the weekend into the beginning of next week. So initially, we've got some colder air from the north northwest coming in again. But very quickly, we start to push milder air back in 
from the southwest. So by Tuesday, we're back into a much milder push winds from the southwest. Over time, high pressure keeps the south relatively dry. Will be more unsettled up to the north. And as we get through to the end of next week, this is midnight on Friday. A little bit wet and windy then. Um, so we'll have this area of low pressure just here. Uh, midnight on Thursday, and that sort of deepens quite significantly, actually, as it moves in along the jet stream, um, as it goes through to midnight on Friday. So that gives a spell of wet and windy weather, uh, by the end of next week. After that, probably go colder again a little bit as well, uh, as the wind sort of, sort of turns into the, um, northwest. Most of next week looks relatively dry and by a vote down in the south. Uh, it's how the uh, GFS Midnight Run is looking. So, again, we've got this ridge building in from southwest on uh, Wednesday. On uh, Monday, I should say, next week. That brings a lot of dry weather with it. But we'll be a little bit cool with winds in from the northwest. Into Tuesday and, indeed, Wednesday, um, high pressure will bring quite a lot of dry weather to the south. But the north will be a little bit more unsettled. All the time winds are coming in from west-southwest, so it looks pretty mild through uh, next week. Uh, towards the end of next week, the high pressure begins to weaken, starts to slip a little bit towards the south and southeast. We still bring a lot of dry weather, though, to the south and east, lower pressure out to the north and the west. But by the time we get through to day 10, then it's beginning to turn more unsettled with high pressure sort of breaking and moving away. Low pressure comes in off the Atlantic, that starts to bring spells of rain and uh, stronger winds in from the west as well. Uh, moving out beyond day 10, we start with Jeff's Midnight Run. We start to see low pressure uh, slipping southwards. So um, this is something we had a bit of last winter. Uh, we find low pressure decoupling from Iceland to begin to move southwards uh, along the jet stream. So that is how, uh, that's where the low pressure is at uh, midday on Monday, the 15th of November, which of course is day 10. It's around here. Um, but look where the low pressure is as we get through to midnight on Monday to Tuesday, 15th, 16th November. That low pressure is slipping southwards through the country. Obviously, that takes a lot of heavy rain uh, with it and starts to pull in cooler or colder air from the north uh, as well. As we move through to midday on Tuesday, the 16th of November, that low pressure slips down into France. So the low pressure basically decoupled from Iceland and gone in that direction along with the jet stream. And that starts to bring in easterly winds. Now, because it's only middle of November, it's not particularly cold, um, although it is cooler, but it's not particularly cold because there's no particularly particularly cold sort of reservoir of air to tap into. So it won't bring much in way of wintry weather, if anything. But it is quite an interesting um, uh, scenario. And as I say, we had quite a bit of that as we went through last winter, you'll remember. So uh, Spat Mars will begin to play around with that a little bit. Uh, or GFS, anyway, is, is quite interesting. That's how we get through to Wednesday, 17th November. We're well beyond day 10, but we are bringing in, like, an easterly wind. If this was January rather than November, that would probably be a very cold easterly with a risk of uh, some snow. As it is, it's not particularly cold easterly, although we do get minus five Celsius per into Scotland. But it's a scenario that's interesting more than the weather it would uh, produce. If that starts happening in the mi in middle uh, of depths of winter, um, in January and February, if we start seeing low pressure decoupling from Iceland and plunging southwards through the west of Europe, pulling in uh, east winds in its wake, then the winter will start to get much colder and, uh, you know, we'll start to have to think about snow and, and what not. Because it's only November, not much aware of winter weather happens with that. But it is an interesting uh, and rather unusual scenario. It's something that we had quite a bit of last week and something that the CFS, you know, the long range CFS daily runs have been playing around with when we've been doing our live streams. Um, and also the Chris of Sneaky Peakies. We have seen that a little bit within the CFS, those low pressure areas decoupling from Iceland and plunging down the western side of Europe. So it's just something to keep in mind. You know, um, just just a possibility that that's a little bit of a teaser, perhaps, of the coming winter. We'll see. Right, anyway, beyond that, we go through to the 18th of November. We find high pressure then ridging in from Scandinavia. So winds are in the in from the east. Not a particularly cold east as we've established, but it will have a chill to it if it comes off. You will certainly feel that easterly wind. And then by the end of the uh, GFS, midnight run, low pressure coming back in from off the Atlantic. That's been cloud and rain in with it. But again, on a little bit of a sunny chart, the jet stream is a black line member on me charts, and we're on the cold side of a jet with that, really. So there is like a dip within the 500 millibar flow 
of the Jetson. Quite an interesting uh, CFS midnight run, even if it's not particularly wintry. Right, this is how the uh, 6Z is looking again. Rich of high pressure builds up from southwest on Monday. Uh, we'll be ready to start off with, and then we'll bring in minor air from the west and from the southwest into second half next week. Just keep a lot of high pressure going in the south. Could be plenty of dry weather there. Always a little bit more unsettled in the north. The high pressure trying to reach towards Scandinavia next weekend, 13th, 14th of November, but going to be unsuccessful. The Atlantic is too active at the moment to allow a Scandinavian high. So uh, we've just had a look quite mild next weekend and probably increasingly unsettled to the north and to the west as well. That's day 10, 15th of November, starts going a little bit flatter then with low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. And into the more extended range, the uh, jet stream begins to dig south once again with six Z. So uh, unsettled, but getting cooler as well. Trying to bring the air in from Greenland, and uh, that will lower the temperature a little bit. It does look quite wet as we go around this middle part of November, and rather cooler uh, or even colder as well. And uh, finishing up like that, so back under a little bit of a ridge from the southwest. No decoupling of below pressure from Iceland on the 6th head, has had with a midnight run, telling us that, you know, that scenario is unusual, and uh, and, and, it, and it may not even verify. But without the GF basically playing around that scenario, as we, as we had a lot of it last winter, is uh, is interesting to know. Right, we'll move on to the GM. If you're enjoying the video, please smash the like button, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. You only need to put around 40 subscribers now to get to uh, 12.5k, so please give us a sub if you can. Thank you so much. Uh, right, GM looks like that. On Monday, high pressure ridge again. From the southwest, that's quite a cool ridge initially, but by Tuesday we will be milder with west-southwest winds. Middle of next week, uh, rather wet in the northwest, mainly dry in the south and southeast. And into the end of next week, totally more unsettled then, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, but winds remain from a west-southwest direction, so at least it will be mild. Heading up towards day 10, yeah, we're looking uh, really unsettled with low pressure bring further spells of rain. Day 10 itself, 15th November, looks a little bit interesting. We're still very mild at this point, still dragging up wind from the southwest. But you notice this area of low pressure sort of slipping southwards. That's probably the same low that the GMS Midnight Run is taking southwards. I think the GM is also hinting at that low sort of moving southwards. So uh, there's the low, I think, uh, around Sunday just there. And by the time we get through to, uh, to Monday, that low looks like it's moved southwards to the Azores. Um, so if we go any further than that, it's possible we would start to see colder air digging in uh, from the north. Conversely, though, we might see below going in that sort of direction, just being very wet weather to small southern parts of the country. So that could go either way, really, beyond day 10. And then the uh, East MWF looks like that again. The ridge in from the southwest on uh, Monday. Uh, mainly dry, but a little bit cool by Tuesday. Next week, returning uh, a lot milder. Mainly dry in the south, wet in the north. Wednesday, uh, sort of looking quite mild and dry, particularly in the northwest. And high pressure re-establishes close to the country Thursday and Friday. Um, so again, that's quite a mild ridge. So that bring, brings me out to uh, 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 dry, mild conditions. But one thing you don't know is whether we'll get fog and that area of high pressure if we do. And of course, that will limit the temperatures quite a lot. Heading to day 10, uh, the high pressure sort of slips away and starts to move up towards Scandinavia. I don't think the Scandinavian high attempt will be successful because the Atlantic does look rather buoyant. Um, and by day 10, so we start to move low pressure and wet and when you ever back in from off the Atlantic, possibly heralding a cooler and wetter third week of the month. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometro.com. Most of the rain will be in the north and west over the next week, 10 days. Not much getting into the south and the south east. There will be some dribs and drabs at times, but really going to be a lot of dry weather in the next week to 10 days away from northern western Scotland. Just looking a little bit more unsettled generally by day 10 with this band of heavier rain moving in from the west. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the 15th of November. 25 members of the ECM ensemble have high pressure dominating over the current chance of lots of dry uh, weather with it around day 10. 13 have high pressure again sitting over to the east of the country. Low pressure out in the Atlantic just starting to move in perhaps by day 10 itself. And 13, just here another 13, 
really high pressure in control. So it looks like we're going to have loads of dry weather, actually, uh, around the middle part of uh, the month. In two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 20th of November. 21 members of the East Shell Ensembles then have higher pressure. Just pulled to our west. Still a lot of dry weather, but probably bringing something a little bit cooler from the northwest uh, with that. Then we've got 15 with high pressure centred over top of the country. Have a lot of dry weather associated with it as well. Probably quite mild. And then another 15 have high pressure pulling out into the Atlantic. So mid-Atlantic ridge with a trough of low pressure digging down through northern and western Europe. And that, of course, brings the wind into the north. So that would be a little bit of a wintry blast there. Uh, with those 15, uh, they would be quite cold with northerly winds, possibly even bring some snow to northern and eastern areas. But, of course, that's only 15 doing that, and it's only it's in too many times. So it's a long way out as well. Generally, it looks like high pressure is in the ascendancy, certainly for the next week to 10 days, possibly even beyond that. Last thing we'll look at is CFSV2 for December. So this is the very latest CFSV2 monthly forecast for December. And uh, go for above average height centre to our west, which will bring the wind in from like a west to northwesterly direction. There's another ridge over here. So basically we've got two ridges one across western Russia, one in the middle of the North Atlantic, and we are somewhere in between. In between. It's probable, I would have thought, between the two ridges, as there's a ridge there, and come over here, there's a ridge there, probable in between those two ridges, there's going to be a trough of low, a trough of low pressure, digging through the western side of Europe, and maybe a dip in the jet stream as well. So that might be, a, you know, have cold snap. potentially not a classic cold setup. Because the high pressure not centred over Greenland and within high latitude. So not a locked in cold setup, but it's possible it's the kind of thing that might deliver at the very least some cold snaps. And so there, but the temperature anomaly has no particular signal uh, with that. So, uh, you know, it's not a particularly cold signal, but it's not a particularly warm signal either. And no signal for precipitation either. But based on that 700 millibar high anomaly, I reckon there could be a little bit of cold snap potential there in uh, December. Not sustained though, because although sometimes we will probably bring the wind in from the northwest or even the north, other times with the position of that ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic, we will back the wind into the west and bring in milder weather. Of course, if the high pressure goes any further southwards, then we're going to start to bring up very mild air from the uh, southwest. Conversely though, if the high pressure was to go a bit further northwards and be centred there, for example, then we will be in business to have locked in cold weather through uh, December. So that's all to be revealed. Right, OK, that's it for today's video, Ben. So if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. And uh, also tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Another 40 subscribers, that's all, will get us to 12.5k. Uh, so please give us a sub. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, so uh, we're done with today's uh, videos. We are going to be live streaming the pub run at 10 o'clock tonight, though. So I should see you live then. Um, just to tell you what's coming up over the weekend. So tomorrow, we'll start off at 7 a.m. Uh, forecast. We'll have a weekend forecast. Have a 10 to 14 day. And the second Christmas update will be released at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, so, you know, that'll be a bit of fun, hopefully. Make sure you're on the channel for 7 p.m. tomorrow for uh, the second instalment of our Christmas updates. And then on Sunday, we've got 7 a.m. upload to begin with. We will uh, have the part one of the 10th winter 2021 2022 update as well. On Sunday morning, that's from 10 a.m. And uh, if that wasn't enough, we'll be live streaming on uh, Sunday evening from 6 p.m. It's a Sunday live stream. So I'll have to do some long range. And that'll be coming up for you, as I say, 6 p.m. on Sunday. So loads going on on the channel this weekend. Please keep checking back for more. But uh, for today's videos, that's all for now. And I shall see you perhaps after 10 o'clock for our Friday Night Live stream. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.